All right, my friends, to set up your Android TV, you first gotta select your Wi-Fi. Now this Sony TV supports 802.11 AC and all the other N, whatever the hell they wanna be. It's great, but unfortunately, if you wanna type in that password, you gotta use that remote control keyboard, which is such a pain to use. Up, up, down, down, left, right, whatever the hell. All right, then you jump on your laptop and type in the pin to connect your Google account. Yes, you need to use your Google account. Set your location, then your locale, which is, you know, your time zone. And then you gotta agree to them monitoring whatever the hell they wanna monitor from you. That's your privacy policy. All right, you're almost there. You get the option now to enable or disable automatic software updates. I personally like to check mine manually to reduce the number of background services running on your Android TV because Android TV can be very, 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 very slow. Next, you set up your channels. But don't worry guys, you can always change these settings later and I'll be showing you how to do just that. Next up, now this is unique to Sony. You can set up how your TV is positioned to help them tweak how the sound sounds for you. Personally, I disabled this crap because it actually made the sound sound bad all the time, but your mileage may vary. Remote start is one of the best features on an Android TV as it allows you to start the TV directly when streaming to Chromecast. So I love this feature. I keep it on. That's it. Your TV is ready to rock. Boom. Get ready to see that everything is an advert and every content showed is a paid show. Yes, you want to watch Kim Kardashian's show, you got to pay 25 friggin' dollars for it. I ain't paying that. You'll find a lot of advertisement for paid content on by default, but we'll get to disabling this very soon. If you scroll down to settings, you can go ahead and rerun the initial setup. The channel cell. In storage and reset, you can see how much space you have left and more importantly, you can reset back to factory settings after deciding to return this damn Android TV. I'm kidding. Calm down. We're going to make it faster. All right. In the about section, you can manually search for software updates. If it's your first run, an update probably will be available. Software updates say they can be downloaded in the background, but in my experience, if you do try to go in the background, the download may sometimes crash, as Android TV tends to not have much system memory available. So to ensure it downloads, just keep the damn download page in the foreground. Once the update is downloaded, you can update it now or later. Updates tend to take around 20 minutes to complete. Now these are some of the best settings I'm gonna give you to start off with. Also in the about section, you can rename a TV. This will affect things like how it's named in Chromecast. And you can opt out of ad personalization, which can slightly ever so insignificantly improve performance as less information is stored on your system. Screw the cookies. In Google Cast, I disable share usage for another negligible but compoundable performance boost. In usage and diagnostics, I also make sure sharing is disabled too. Boom, compounding all those performance gains. I also make sure that in date and time, I use network time, as this also helps alleviate Chromecast connection issues. In location, while you know it's not really necessary, as you're not really gonna be taking your TV out and about, but I do keep it on to help apps automatically set up their locales and all that crap quicker. In speech, I disable block offensive words because I'm that kind of guy and I need all the help I can get with voice recognition. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Now in the app section, now this is going to be the performance section where you get some of that good stuff back. As you can see, it lists the running app and there are plenty. System apps, background app, running app, all that crap. So it's always best to uninstall ones you don't use. For example, I'm going to uninstall Yup TV. Yup TV should be called Yuck TV. It's pointless. It's rubbish. Uninstall. Nope. Even though it's removed, it will still appear in Sony's featured list. So, we also got to remove all those extra crap that you get from the manufacturer. And sometimes you can't remove them. You can choose the option of disabling notifications. You do this and boom shakalaka, it's at your face. 
your TV is now faster. There are lots of settings to play with in the menus. The top ones I'm going to shout out is Sony particular. I go ahead and reduce motion flow and turn off clear audio. I find this makes my picture and audio sound better, especially in low quality sources. However, you know, everyone's different. Your preferences may vary. Developer mode. Now this is going to unlock some performance boosts. Now develop mode is locked by default and it's hidden away. To unlock this, you go to settings, about, scroll down to build and press OK eight times until you're notified that you're now a developer. You see, you don't need a computer science degree, my friends. You just tap eight times on a button and you're a developer. In the system preferences row, add the engine. Now add developer options. Inside, you'll find a lot of cool toggles. I like to speed up animations to make my TV feel faster. You'll find this option in drawing. The best one to change, though, is in the apps menu. Where inside you can specify if you like your TV to keep background activities running. As Android TV is slow and doesn't have much memory and it's slow, I tend to disable this and reduce the number of background processes to one. You can play around with this to your heart's joy and find a perfect tweak for you. Maybe you got some supercharged TV with million megabytes RAM. Go ahead and run them all. But for me, this Sony TV, it's slow as hell. I don't understand it wherever I don't make TVs so I limit it now this does actually speed up my TV especially running apps because most apps like Plex Kodi and all the apps you get on a Play Store they're not really optimized for Android TV because it's not really that big of a platform they're more likely gonna optimize for Android itself this is how changing the volume was before reducing background apps and disabling all the standard background running apps and this is how fast it is after. Yes, volume control on friggin' Android TV is that slow by default. Anyway, you're welcome. I've just made your TV faster. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Give me a hug on eBay. And you're welcome. Take it easy, bros and broettes. And, you know, I'm out of words. So, bye. Adios. Vamos. Arriba, Dutchie.